The model that we have right now for the traditional education is really, really old. Uh, it's very antiquated. Our society doesn't fit into that package anymore. The, this type of traditional education doesn't meet the needs of the jobs that we have now and what we're going to have in the future. Yeah, I think we've seen a huge shift in society because uh, a lot of the jobs where, that were typically referred to as unskilled are no longer available or they're not high paying. And so one thing that we're trying to do is prepare them for an environment um, one, that already is different, and two, we don't really know what it's going to look like when they graduate. Because our world is shifting and our world is changing, you know, we hear all the time we're preparing for our students for jobs that don't even exist. So if we're preparing them for these jobs that don't exist, what, what, do, we, what, what do we tell them to do? Well, we work on developing their skills, their ability to problem solve for problems that we don't even know yet. We are preparing them to think creatively. Our Portrait of a Graduate initiative, you talk about the skills that we want for our students um, as they leave our schools and graduate. Critical thinking, problem solving, um, that global awareness piece, um, and that resiliency piece. It goes hand in hand, and I'm excited that we see that correlation there. So inquiry-based learning um, really does step away from the traditional sit in a classroom, take notes, um, and then regurgitate that information on a test. No longer do we need learners that know everything and can memorize information. What they have, they have every resource and every bit of information at their fingertips. And what we need to do now is transform that learning so that students know what to do with that information. How do they solve problems with that information once they have it? What we're doing now with inquiry-based learning is we're giving students problems, we're giving them the tools, and then giving them the creativity to come up with a solution together. So it does really pull together all of those things that we look for with the portrait of a graduate. And that's the big difference between the traditional style and the inquiry-based model. Figure out what you know, figure out what you don't know, figure out what you need to know to solve this problem. In the past, solving an equation has been, here's an equation, solve it, find the value of x. With this model, what you can do instead is say, okay, here, you're a business owner now. This is the situation that you're dealing with. Here, is your, here are your sales from the past three months. Here are your expenses from the past three months. Go ahead and make a model for me that shows what you're running into. They're thinking about, okay, well, this actually has a purpose. There's a reason why I would need this information. You're really looking at multiple skill development for the student. It's their ability to ask good questions, to gather that question and analyze and synthesize and kind of put everything together to make it make sense for themselves and then be able to translate that information back to others. The big difference in the way that um, I, I function is that I guide the kids through what our objective is um, and they need to do the searching rather than I tell them, this is what you need to learn, remember this, I'm testing you on this. We have an objective, we have one focus, and it's the, the children's, the students' work to really inquire what is this about and how it makes sense to them. I just went back after six years of being out of, out of the school. What was amazing when I'd walk into the classroom is I didn't know where the front of the classroom was, right? Because there, there wasn't a teacher that they needed to face and, and get that information from. And I think that's a great metaphor for what's happening throughout the country or what will happen very soon, is the focus is no longer on what the teacher is doing in the classroom, it's how the teacher is helping students to do some pretty amazing work. It's really about a student-centered environment, really about putting the learning back in their hands. So you see more collaboration with those kids in the classroom. You see more leadership from them versus the teacher. You see the teacher really serving as a facilitator, helping to guide the learning in the classroom. Then from there, oh, you can go in so many different ways to really get those students to take charge of their own learning. And it's wonderful. Through access to the internet and other devices, the whole world is at my palms. I can do my research on any subject I would like, any subject that's pertinent to me.
I see the kids are excited as long as they have the, that choice. And that's one of the things that we talk about. Like, you always have a choice. How do you want to go about this? With personalized learning, you can change the, the pace of instruction, the place of instruction, and the path that they use to show their mastery. And so as a teacher, one thing you want to do is find that balance between personalizing instruction, which we all agree on is good, but also finding opportunities where they can collaborate and mentor each other and communicate with each other in meaningful ways about what they're learning. And I think when you find that balance, that's when the magic in the classroom happens. Just this past week, some students just came up with different ideas about the problem that was presented to them that I didn't even think about. That, that's huge, just the students being able to get that chance to work with each other and share their ideas. Uh, and that's, that's what I want for my son. I want him to be able to take information and come up with a solution to the problem and not just sit there and wait for somebody to show him how to solve it. As a parent, um, it is my expectation that the school does prepare my students with the traditional skills of reading, writing, and arithmetic, but also um, that they provide them the skills to be successful in the world today. And that does go beyond reading, writing, and arithmetic to make them a better citizen in society and to be prepared for whatever the workforce will be when, they, when they're there in seven years. It allows this layer of independence on their part to own their own learning, and I, that just is such an exciting concept.